Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's one, I'm really, really excited about this one. I am using Spellbinders 2020 Halloween collection. Oh my hat. Um, and this is the Glimmer Foil collection that I have this year. Um, I don't have all of it, I don't think. I might do. <laughs> Um, somewhat obsessed with Halloween. Those of you who know me know that I love Halloween. Love it, love it, love it. Anyway, so moving on. I have the Gemini foil press machine that I'm using and um, I'm putting my, I've taped, I saw Nicole Spore do this so many times. I've watched hundreds of her videos and she actually tapes the die to the cardstock and then puts the foil in between the card and the, um, I'm calling it a die, but it's more like a, a foiling plate. So I'm using the spider web to create, the nice thing about this is it, it, you create it on, you foil it on one side and then you flip the card around and you'll be able to foil on the other side. And then the other die that I've got there is a, is a um, Crofts Companion one that actually came with my foiling machine. And it actually will foil and cut out the frame which is so beautiful so I thought it worked really well with this card now this is also the second time <laughs> I have done this so <laughs> um, I had a couple of comments about the lighting and I know that my lighting isn't very good so I am working on but look at that sorry I got distracted as usual um, so now I'm just flipping the die around and doing the exact same thing on the other side so taped to the back of the card got a new piece of foil um, and I'm going to just line that up underneath in between shiny side up so basically your your plate is going to press the pretty stuff right the, the pretty side the shiny yummy color into the cardstock and that's that's essentially what it's doing um, and what the machine does is it heats up the plate it heats up the foil and then as you run it through your die cutting machine my gemini is actually to the left of me here as it heats that up as you put it through sorry it it kind of like letter presses it into the paper and that's when you come out with your foiled fabulous stuff so um i'm just getting the second part of that frame and the thing that i like about that is that you could have it just on the top just on the bottom or you could have it on both top and bottom to create a frame which is what we've done today um, and look at that isn't that well when I get that off isn't that beautiful I just love it um, I'm also going to do the little sentiment now with the foils if you are using the tape try not to tape too much onto the foil itself um, and keep the tape on the actual I'm calling them dies, but they're like they're like plates, I guess. Um, just because otherwise you could land up with some of that foil actually um, getting stuck to the card where you don't want it. It's easy enough to get over foiling um, off the cardstock by just um, using a sand eraser just to gently take that off. But even the, and you'll see me do that in a, in a second because there was a little bit of over foiling there, and I will get. Um, a uh, a die that Spellbinders have also come out with within a uh, part of the Christmas collection and it's just a really thin die um, but it's long and the reason I also went with that is because you can use them with a lot of like lawn fawn have a lot of long sentiments and but they're really narrow so you can use it with that as well which is I was thinking ahead of myself <laughs> which is saying something so these two little characters are part of one of the Halloween sets. So I'm lining them up in the middle of my frame that I've created with the spider webs. And I'm also going to foil them in the frame. So if you were using different color foil, I'm using the same color foil to do the whole card in the same color. Um, and this is the rose gold, I believe. Um, but you could easily do this in different color foils and have all these different shades. So if it was, I don't know if you get orange foil, but I guess you must get, or you get all sorts of colors of foil. Um, and I guess you could just keep foiling different colors depending on your project. So 
I'm going to grab the die now and this die is very long and I'm going to show you that I will line it up on the left hand side where I want that die um, once I've run this through um, and the foil press is nice because it beeps at you when it's ready <laughs> so even if you get distracted like I do um, it will tell you when it's ready to go. I also cut the foil as close to the size of the project that I'm doing um, uh, sorry the size of the dies that I'm using because you don't want to you don't want to accidentally overfoil anywhere which can happen quite a lot so because this one's going to die cut out I'm not taping the um, the die and the uh, to the cardstock I'm just gonna you'll see what happens it's just I just love it so I was just referring to my little manual because you know and for these ones you need to have a metal shim between the yellowy top plate and the cardstock because obviously when it's cutting through you don't necessarily want it cutting on there and I'm happy with it cutting on the metal shim thing whatever you call that thing <laughs> um, I probably should get the metal shim for the, the Gemini Junior um, and that will be about that size as well so you can see my die there for my sentiment and I've put the die on the left hand side where the happy is and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move that over so that I put the other end at the end of the word Halloween so that I can actually make that whole sentiment the right sort of size if you like. So here I'm just lining it up on the other end. Um, one end is fine, I can just put some tape onto the cardstock hanging over. On the other side be careful not to put the tape on the foil because it will or could um, destroy all your work in foiling the thing in the first place <laughs> so um, it may look like it was there but it wasn't it was it was off it wasn't actually on there so this is what happens so you get the centerpiece which is just an extra bit of foil and an extra piece of cardstock and then the frame cuts out and look at this isn't that stunning oh my hat and that was one of the freebies that came with the machine so anyway I have a standard A2 size cardstock, a card here, um, and I've got some black cardstock. And the card base or the orangey color is uh, spellbind. No, it's not spellbind. It's <laughs> Stampin' Up, um, Cajun Craze. I thought that was actually a really good color for fall. Um, and then I have some black cardstock, with, which I actually think is Crafters Companion brand. And the purpley color is Stampin' Up's fresh fig which is a retired color unfortunately but basically think oranges purples but because they're more muted and they're more on the yeah more muted side I thought they worked really well together for a, a not so bright and cheery kind of Halloween card <laughs> so you know how some I like the bright and fun and you know funky kind of colors for Halloween but I also like that sort of deep rich rich that's the word I was looking for rich um, more muted more vintagey more spooky I guess look for hello the darker kind of stuff kind of my thing so um, yeah so those are the colors I used and what I did I will bring in the original card <laughs> Um, and I had so many, like I said, I don't know if I said this actually, I had so many issues with lighting and trying to sort that out and they were so bad. I've actually had to redo a Christmas one as well, which you'll see coming up, but I, and that Christmas card was actually so bad I didn't even do the Christmas, didn't even show you the first one because <laughs> it was so awful. But the Halloween ones, I actually loved how these turned out and you'll see in a second, all I did so that I had a variety rather than exactly the same thing because I wanted to show you the same process because I liked how it turned out but I didn't want the same thing so I actually did opposite colors and I changed the sentiment but other than that it's exactly the same so the one on the right hand side is actually the original one that I had filmed and played around with and I actually had good footage but the lighting was so bad that I just went no nope. It's not good enough if I can't sit through it why would I expect you guys to do that so I redid the entire thing <laughs> painful as it is um, it wasn't painful because it was it was good fun but look how beautiful that is look at the foiling look at the images 
spellbinders have knocked it out of the park and I think their frame of crafters companion just works so well with it. So I hope you liked this video and I hope to see you in the next one guys. Bye!